you've got this grid right here. So essentially what this is, if I'm not mistaken, is I'm in the middle of a sphere and this grid has been mapped as a texture to the sphere. So I'm standing in the center of it, right? Here's the grid, or uh, here's the sphere. I shouldn't draw a person, I should draw a little camera. So I am in the center of this sphere and I'm basically just looking around at the sphere and it looks 3D because it's just mapped correctly. But what this allows us to do is this allows us to look up and left and right and all around like that. So I usually teach perspective this way because it just is a very good tool in my opinion. So one point perspective, I am looking straight. My horizon line is about here. I'm looking straight ahead. If I draw a box in one point perspective, it would essentially be, and these boxes aren't gonna be exact because I'm just gonna draw this kind of fast, but basically, if I drew a box in one point perspective, it would look essentially like this, right? If I drew on the ground, this is one point perspective, it would look like this, right? My horizontals are going perfectly horizontal and my verticals are going perfectly vertical. Now, not quite right. You can see that towards the edge, these are a little bit tilted. Like if it was vertical, it would be like this. So it's just a couple of degrees off. But for the most part, this is one point perspective and this is how it would be used. You draw things like this and you show a scene, right? If this is the inside of a room or if this is a building or something right here, you would draw it like that. If this was a, if there was a street going down here, I'll draw that a little bit neater right street lights coming uh like you know this or whatever then that would be what's one point perspective is used for so how do we know when to use one point perspective and how do we know to use two point perspective well it really depends on what you're trying to do with the scene so if i take my camera and i just ever so slightly turn it this direction you will see that these lines that were once horizontal are now starting to converge over to the right. And then the original perspective vanishing point, which is over on the left, are still converging to that vanishing point. So my box essentially now would look like this. Like that. So there is my my box, I'm looking towards the right at it. So I am in, in relation to this box, right? Here is the box in the top view and here is me and I am looking at that box like that. Okay, so if I, and this is the cool thing about this, is if I merge this layer down, although it's going to get a bit pixelated, what I can do is I can turn and look at this direction. So look, we're back in one point perspective and that box on the right that I just drew is in one point perspective now. So if I look back at it, it's in two point perspective. And I look at it this way, it's still in two point perspective, right? And the cool thing about this is, now we can introduce three point perspective. So if I look up, then I am in three point perspective. But you see what happens is, because when I look up, everything that I'm seeing in my view is above me. And since this box isn't above me, then I'm not able to see it anymore. The top of this box is above me, but obviously the bottom of it is below me. So the thing about perspective is your horizon line is your eye line. That is your head height. That is the height that you are seeing out of. So if there were people in this scene that were as tall as I am, they would be basically right like this I'll draw them like this so here's a person right there right and someone further away would be right maybe like down there or something I'm not measuring out exactly if I'm using this grid then I would go like this like that measure the head out and he would be right that tall so anyways, but you see that he's still on that horizon line, which is my head height. So now when I go into three point perspective, I'll merge that down, look up, and now everything that I am looking at is above me. So a three point perspective box would look like this. See, I'm looking up at this box. 
I just love this tool that Photoshop has. It's so useful and it's such a it's such an unfortunate thing that they're getting rid of it. So anyways, I'm looking up at this box, right? This is the bottom of the box right here. So now if we go back to merge this down, look back down, look straight, check this out. A one point perspective box. Maybe I could just draw us like as if we're inside of the box. So here we go. Um, there we go. Even with a grid for sometimes it's just hard to draw using perspective, huh? Uh, like that. So this is a box in front of us that we can see through like this and then it goes like that. And this should essentially connect up. And if it doesn't pretend it does right one point perspective box. So I'll just write one point. You look over to the right, two point perspective box, two point. You look up, three point perspective box, three point. All right. So that's how I generally teach it. Now, this is really cool because it gives you a way to visualize, right? And three point doesn't have to be above you. Three point can be below you, too. So here's a three point perspective box that is below you like this. So there's a three point box down there like that three point. So now let's talk a little bit about focal length and why that's important. So focal length is basically how wide or how narrow you're looking out of it's like a telescope or not. So the cool thing about this in Photoshop is you can zoom in and you can zoom out. Now, the reason that this matters is this has this is all about your convergence. So how fast are the lines coming together towards the vanishing point or how quickly is the foreshortening happening? Right. So this box, if it was just extended down a really long ways like this. Like that. Well, even though this box is the same size further away, this line, if I take this line and I go up here. Well, even though it's the same length as the front, look, it's almost it's almost half as long if I like warp this in. Right. So that is called foreshortening. It's basically as objects get further away, visually, they get smaller, they take up less space. And that's that's just how it works, right? So your box in perspective. That's a plane in perspective, the halfway point might write might be right about there. And this line, you know, line A and line B, in reality, it looks like this, probably quite a bit longer than that, actually, probably maybe more like that or something. But in reality, it looks like this. But in perspective, it looks like that because of the foreshortening. So how fast this happens is your foreshortening. And that depends on the camera that you're using. So the camera is the length of the lens. So if we go like this, and let's just say that this is a, let's just say that this is a big, maybe a big building, right? So here's your building. And then let's say, let me think, actually, let's draw a new building. So let's say that we see yeah, down here. Let's see, we got a building down here. And it's maybe this far away. So we're looking at this building. This is the side of it. It's like an apartment building. And maybe it's got hmm, maybe a couple little roofs like this. I'm just going to draw this really fast. And I'm just going to cheat. And I'm going to take this. And I'm going to do this. And these aren't even lined up. These are the windows, okay? Pretend. So we see these buildings, let's say in this top window, there's a person standing in that window that we can see. So with this lens that I'm using right now, we are seeing this entire building, we're seeing everything in front of the building, I'm, I'm taking in a lot of information, right? We're very wide. But if I merge this down really quick, and I start zooming in my FOV, I'm basically looking through a telescope. So I can look up, I can see this person in the window. It's quite blurry, 110 millimeter lens, 200 millimeter lens, 300 millimeter lens. 
At least that's what the Photoshop claims, right? So here's, where are we at? Here's that person in the window. But what happens is the lines, the convergence, I'll have to make a new layer for this. The, uh, the convergence of these lines gets less and less and less and less as the length of the lens gets longer. As the more telescopic your lens is, the less line A and B converge towards one spot. If there's a vanishing point, this is one point perspective, but basically the less convergence there is. So your person is in the window, here they are, and you know they have like stuff in the background or whatever, and this would be basically very flat perspective. So whereas you have a wide angle, this one is very flat. This is a long, a long lens. So, okay, let's, uh, this is the problem is if I start moving this around, it sticks to my screen, right? So I gotta be, I gotta be really careful. I have to merge these layers and then that just makes it all blurry again, but whatever, it's not perfect. So I zoom back out really far and you see a lot of stuff, right? You see up and down at the same time. And then you see this box too. So that would be a really wide lens. So plan out and figure out what you want to do. I'm not going to go into too depth into this video. I'm not going to be talking about like curved linear perspective and fisheye lenses and everything. Maybe I'll do that in a future video uh, unless the Photoshop decides that it doesn't want this anymore and I can't do it anymore. So, but anyways, um, that's one way you can think about perspective. You want to think about where am I looking? Am I looking up? Am I looking down? What direction am I looking at it? And that can help you really choose what kind of perspective you want to use. And then don't forget about the, uh, the focal length either, because this is really important and it depends on what you want to show. All right, now let's go ahead and just do a little bit of a demo. So the very first thing that I want to do is I want to figure out exactly what focal length I'm going to use. What am I going to look at? So I'm thinking of maybe, I'm, I'm really just going to do boxes for this, but I'm thinking maybe I'll zoom out maybe to here and we'll have a, we'll have a good size scene here. So I'm just going to draw this in and you can see how I, how I do this. So let's sketch in some of our, some of our stuff. What do we want? Maybe I'll have a box here to there to there. Just like that. We'll have another box stacked on top. Maybe coming back about there. So I'm not really trying to make anything specific. I'm just going to stack some boxes, but it's going to look a lot better than maybe the way that you've been doing perspective up till now. And I also need a thumbnail for this video. So there's that. Maybe do some of this. This isn't necessarily supposed to be a follow along with me. I'm kind of just demoing how I would use this sort of thing. Right, maybe put a big box in the back here. The vanishing point is where these lines converge. So about there. This could be a nice thin box using my line weight. I'm just going to draw something pretty fast. I can put some stuff in the front. Poke that out there. Maybe I'll just do this. I could even tilt this up so I would use this perspective grid and I would tilt this and I'd bring this over. I wouldn't draw that back corner very dark if I would at all. So 
So, you know, this could be something like a garbage can or a dumpster or something. Like, if this is a building, and maybe this could be another dumpster, I could cut this in right here. Kind of just making this up as I go. This tilts up like that, like that. There we go. All right, this could be a building. There could be something on top of here, a door. Another box there. Alleyway. Right, it could be like that. Could be like this. Not a lot of narration because I'm just drawing kind of quickly, figuring stuff out. Could draw some strings going across, maybe a little street light coming off. Maybe not right now. You can have a box out here, maybe implying a car. All right, we could always turn that into a car in the background. Like that, more buildings maybe in the background. Don't make them too dark. Maybe another thing over here. Another building. Another building back here. Being cut off by this one. You know, maybe this is even a giant building like that. This really just gets into design, to be honest. Designing something out that looks good, right? We can have cylinders as well. We could have a cylinder. Right here. Once I'm happy with this design, right, I could even have another cylinder over here. So go like that. Be a couple of cylinders, one behind the other, maybe one kind of behind this building back here, like hiding behind it. Maybe make this corner come out just a little bit further than that. I notice I'm trying to avoid these tangencies, like I don't want these two lines to line up perfectly, so I made this pop out more. I could make the lid of this. So, come on, maybe split this, do this. Have that come open a little bit long. Maybe shorten it about that big. Could be that. draw this in here the back corner I can even add a little bit of value to diff start differentiating like the the sides of these things I don't want this video to get too long though so I'm just gonna do this kind of fast just using the basic round maybe 
right here. I'm not rendering or painting anything. I'm just shading in some of the sides in order to pop them out against each other to see how it looks. Yeah, there we go. Maybe a little bit in this back one as well. You can just add all these different overlaps. You can have another building here and another one back there, right? You can do some clouds back there. Notice how this is really starting to kind of feel like an alleyway or like a back lot of a building or something. And I'm just using this grid. Like I looked around and I basically decided what do I want? Like, where do I want to be? Where am I looking? Where am I at? Right, maybe I will make this a dumpster and I can break this out, break that out. Draw wheels. You know, maybe there's garbage can or garbage bags over here. Layered cardboard boxes on the ground. Maybe there's cardboard boxes here. Maybe we've got some lines coming across here. We got the other side of this peeking out. Maybe we've got soda cans behind here, soda can, soda can. Barrel of some sort. You can have a, hmm, maybe a cable, cable coming out of here, like this. Yeah, I don't really like that. This could be a dumpster as well. Maybe round it. So I'm going to take this box and I'm just going to round it. I'll round this one. I'll round this one. I'll round this one. You can put some texture on the side of this building. clouds. You know, we could have a big building in the background that you can see. And all the cool thing about this is, boom, merge it. See? And now I could move this and I can just continue drawing like around me. So make a new layer and just keep drawing. Here's the side of that building. Maybe there's a door here. So now I'm looking at a different area, right? Maybe this building's got a shallow roof on it, right? Maybe it's got another building connected on this side. Mm, maybe not quite. Maybe it's a little bit back there. Right, maybe we've got a couple windows up here. That's dumb. I haven't even, I wasn't even thinking about like measuring or anything. Uh, let's draw this. And then let's put one on the other side. About there. Right, now this can go in. We could do this. Like that. You know, this could be a door. Could have a window on it. Eh, kind of dumb. Right, we could have some buildings back here in the distance. 
that sort of thing. I don't know what this line is. What did I do with this line? Eh, whatever. I'll work with it. I have no idea what that line is. Um, there could be, you know, mat in front of this door. Um, I don't know. What else? Another building here? Right? Could be there. We could just see the side of it. So now there's this walkway through here. Like that. I can put some more cardboard boxes, paper, whatever on the ground. Maybe these pieces. Maybe a big piece right here. Right? Maybe a bottle. Maybe a couple bottles, maybe a can, maybe another garbage bag, maybe two garbage bags. Maybe stuff on the wall, splatters. See, that one looks really weird now. Because my, my lens is pretty zoomed out. I'm using a, quite a wide lens on this. So stuff towards the edge gets pretty distorted. Anyways, merge that down. See, we've got this back alleyway scene now. But, like, this is how I want you to think about perspective. Where are you looking? Are you looking up? Are you looking down, right? Like, you could go here, make a new layer. You could go, you know, and draw something in the air. I don't know, like a airplane or something. How do we draw an airplane? Maybe I'll just do this. Something's dumb and simple. Right? That's dumb. Right, an airplane flying through that airplane is so close. I could just take it with my selection, put it up there, like that. But we're going to see clouds as well, right? So the clouds above us will be looking up at. So we're probably going to see the bottom of these clouds. So we'll see maybe something like that, right? And then over here. We can see this part of these clouds. I'm not sure if that's going to look very good. But right, we'll basically be seeing clouds like that. So if we merge this and we look, see, we look up, we can see the clouds. We look down. What's going to be down? Well, we could draw... I don't know, you know, a manhole. Eh, it's a bad, not drawn very well. Let's just not draw a manhole. How about that? Right, you can draw box, can, another can, another can, you know, stuff on the ground. cardboard box maybe another cardboard box this one just happens to be kind of in perspective maybe this cardboard box the edge is coming up like that maybe this one's got a sticker on it All right merge that down See, this whole scene is starting to come together. You could draw behind you. You could draw everywhere. And you just understand perspective, and you're drawing on the grid. Now, you're not always going to have this grid available, but if I were to just have this and no looking around, I could still do it because I'm thinking in terms of, oh, what's to my left? What's up? What's down? So you could definitely do that sort of thing as well. And then I can take the FOV out. I can take the FOV in. We can look at this, and now look, it's a it's a picture of basically the garbage can, right? Make a new layer. 
make this garbage can super full. Put a garbage bag in front of it. Garbage bag maybe, maybe here, right? That kind of thing. The wheel, the wheel back here. And then you can start putting like lighting on stuff because you have the, you have your whole scene. So if I were to start lighting this, which I'm not going to do completely in this scene, I would basically do that sort of thing. You can light this cylinder, this barrel, light it like a cylinder. Right, you can add texture you know, run marks to the side of this, maybe yucky stuff, puddle on the ground of nasty stuff, texture inside of it. Now I don't have to draw with black, I could draw with white and erase, but I'm just going to draw with black because this is a drawing, it's not a painting. Although with digital art, the boundary between drawing and painting is almost non-existent because you just make the brush smaller, you're drawing, you make the brush bigger, you're painting, right? Stuff like that. Anyways, so I can make this scene about the garbage can and I can make the composition have to do with the garbage can. Merge that down look at it. If I made the canvas bigger, it wouldn't be so blurry, but since the canvas, it, it would slow my computer down more. See, there we go. But anyway, I want to keep this video from getting way too long. So I did want this as a demo for my students in the future when I direct them here. So that's why I, I did all of this. But anyways, um, so that will be it for this video. If you liked the video, Please like and subscribe. Um, it would mean a lot. We're really trying to kick off this channel. And me and Christina, my wife, are going to be uploading a lot of videos in the future. So keep tuned, and I will see you in the next video.